Joshua chapter 1, and I'd like to give a very warm welcome to those who are watching on the video today. <coughs> After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land and land I'm about to give them to the, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, to the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Three days from now you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. But to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you. The Lord your God is giving you rest and has granted you this land. Your wives, your children, and your livestock may stay in the land Moses gave you east of the Jordan. But all your fighting men, fully armed, must cross over ahead of your brothers. You are to help your brothers until the Lord gives them rest as he has done for you, until they too have taken possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan towards the sunrise. Then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do, and wherever you send us, we will go, just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey your words, whatever you may command them, they will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. I'm hoping this works. <laughs> uh, let's just pray, shall we? Oh yes. Um, Lord, I recognise that it's you that speaks to our heart and it's me that speaks with my mouth. And so I pray, Lord, that I may speak from my heart, from your heart today, that you may speak to each one of us about your goodness, about your grace, about your plans for us, and Lord, just um, pray, Father, that each of us will be open to your prompting, to your word, um, and just take this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> I'd like to be able to see what I'm supposed to uh, look at. So, our God is good. And here all we <laughs> all the time, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so here we have um, the uh, reading today from one Joshua, and we need to think a bit about Joshua. Joshua was, of course, one of the spies with Moses, um, and he was sent out to to the Promised Land, um, to the land of Canaan. And him and Caleb came back with good reports and said, we can do it. And the other spies came back with poor reports 
and said that it's giants, the, the, the problems are too great. And of course the people of Israel believed their doubts and doubted their faith in God. But I want to tell you one thing, that if this is the only thing that you remember today, that we have big problems, but our God is bigger than our problems. <laughs> I just sort of felt prompted to say that this morning as John was praying, so I just want to repeat that. Our problems are big, <laughs> but our God is bigger than our problems. And it's when we believe that our God is bigger than our problems that we can move forward. <laughs> you see, the people of Israel were not moving forward for the last 40 years. They were sitting in the desert. They weren't going forward, they were waiting. The new generation of under 40s <laughs> was now growing up, and of course it is a new generation. And of course Joshua was thinking, well, you know, I went to the, the land that came before, I was one of those spies, and nobody believed me. Nobody took any notice of me. What's going to happen? <laughs> Are they going to take any notice this time? I don't know. So, the verse 2, it says, Moses, your servant is dead now. Get ready to cross the Jordan. And in a sense, we all have to cross that barrier of fears and doubts and problems. Because unless we do with God, then we will stay still. And one of the meanings of ready, if you look at the other versions of uh, verse 2, it actually means to rise, to get up. Now, of course, when you're sitting down, you don't get anywhere, not unless you shuffle an awful lot. But actually, when you stand up, you can, sorry, <laughs> I won't walk off the vision. <laughs> you can actually move, can't you? You can move forward. So actually, getting ready means rise. It means stand up. And today, metaphorically, I want you to think about how to stand up. Let's see. Hope this works. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and now all these photographs are uh, royalty-free, except so you don't need to worry about that. And uh, unfortunately, this is not the um, Jordan. This is God Manchester. But hey, you know, you'll, you'll have to just use your imagination here. <coughs> So let's have a look at Joshua. What are his biggest worries? The first worry is, how will I know where to go? <laughs> you see, that faces us all, doesn't it? What, what's God really saying to me? What should I be doing? What, where should I be going? What, what, what's, what's God doing at the moment? The next problem is, what about all the people that occupy the land? Look, there were giants, you know, they are big people. They're a bit, bit intimidating. Our problems sometimes can be intimidating. Um, you know, we've, we've been through a tough 20 months. We probably are not out of it. We don't need to live in fear. We need to live in trust. Our problems might be great, but God is greater than our problems. We just need to remember that. As Joshua was fearing, um, how do I know that God will not desert me? Well, that's a really good question. You know, will God be with me? Are, are we sure that God will be with me? Um, oh, I just don't know about that. How do I know that God will fulfill his promises to take this possession, um, to, uh, to uh, take us to possess a land flowing with milk and honey? So these are all questions that Joshua, it doesn't actually say that in the text, but I've kind of deduced it from what's uh, <laughs> written there. Um, all, all are kind of things that we might think of, you know, is God going to be with us, you know? We, we, God's put on my heart something, is God really in it? Is God going to do that for us? Is God really going to, to work in our lives? So let's see. Are we ready for what God has? Now, the interesting thing is with, this, um, uh, with these verses is that, of course, God maps out 
the territory. He makes it very specific. Well, of course, to Joshua, the land that God wants him to, to inherit is far bigger than the land actually he does inherit. Which is interesting, because this is a promise of God. And so often, we don't step into all of the promises of God. We, we only partially stop, step into them. But God wants us to fully take on all of God's promises. So what are God's promises? Now, <laughs> uh, you know, this, I'm sorry about the slides, but this is the best that I can do. <laughs> I was thinking of sheep, you know, the, in the wilderness. And, anyway. <laughs> uh, do you know, uh, the last 20 months, it's easy, isn't it, to let things slip. And I'm not talking about... <laughs> Seeing family, I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about our relationship with God. Mm. It's easy to let things slip. Mm. We haven't got church, we haven't got house groups, we haven't got this meeting, we haven't got that meeting. It's easy to let things slip when we're in the wilderness. But God wants to bring us back. He wants us to refocus. And these are the commands, these are the things that he told Joshua. And the first thing that I want you to, to really understand is feeling weak or insignificant is not a barrier for God to use you. <laughs> um, I often feel very weak. I, and I probably, I don't know whether I look like you or not, but I, I often think, oh my goodness, you know. <laughs> um, uh, you know, am I going to say the right thing? Am I going to do the right thing? Am I going to speak? You know, I just have to trust God at times. Absolutely, we have, to, we have to really hold on. And feeling weak and insignificant is not a barrier for God to use Joshua or us, all right? <laughs> um, it's okay to feel weak and insignificant. What it isn't okay is because we trust in the God who is not weak and who is not insignificant. He is greater than our problems, than our River Jordans, whatever that may be. And so, the first thing that he calls Joshua to be is to be strong and very courageous. Now, we have done um, some decorating recently. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> not past tense, present tense. We are doing some decorating at the moment. And uh, we had a plasterer in, you see. <laughs> and we've got quite a heavy three-piece suite. Now, he's, he's about 30-something, and I'm about 60-something, all right? And... He lifted the sofa uh, as though it was a, a bag of sugar. <laughs> I lifted the sofa <laughs> thinking, oh my goodness, it's a lot heavier than the last time I lifted it, and managed to get this sofa into the conservatory, but nearly dropped it, and I thought, oh, I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> Look, this strength is not that strength, all right? This strength is not about weightlifting or being strong. It's being uh, focused. It's being resolute. It's being determined to fulfil what God has put in your heart. That is what this strength is. It's a strength of purpose. Okay. So when God says something, as he has done here, be strong and courageous, he actually says it three times. I don't know whether you notice that. Um, and I know numbers probably don't mean a lot to us, you know. My mother always used to say, do your shoelaces up. Do your sh Come on, just do your shoelaces up. And by about the third time, I'd do the shoelaces up. Don't, you don't need to check, they are done up, mums. <laughs> 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 but if something's repeated, it's normally for a purpose, isn't it? Normally we kind of, oh, yes, I know that. <laughs> Be strong and courageous. Yes, I know that. Um, but God wants us to take notice of this because he's not only said it once, but twice, but three times. Now, in the Bible, <laughs> um, three is a very significant number. Of course, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Triune God. So it's divine completion. So it's a really important number. So take notice is what, is, what God is saying. So what is courageous? mean? Well, it means a strength from becoming restored. Right. Do you know, 
um, Joshua needed restoring. It might sound odd that he needed was Why? Because he had that severe disappointment, didn't he? Nobody took any notice of him spying, but he um, was restored by God. It's okay to have disappointments. It's okay. I'm not writing you off. Okay, you might have blown it. I'm not writing you off. Look, uh, you know, I didn't manage to do this. I'm not writing you off, David, John, <laughs> Tony. I'm not writing you off. I'm restoring it. And that's the courage that he wants each of us to have. That courage that goes forward. So, do we really believe that God will never leave us or forsake us? Well, you know, God promises that I will be with you always. I will never leave you nor, nor forsake you. This is verse 5. And no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Do you know, this is one of these verses that we all know, but don't practice. What do I mean by that? How often do we pray that God will be with us? Well, it's not a bad prayer, but rather, we need to be praying, thank you God for being with us, or help us to recognise God being with us. You see, the thing is this, that I have two daughters. They never stop being my daughters, even if they do something wrong. Even if they really upset me, they never stop being my daughters. I never stop loving them. Okay, I can't be with them uh, because they're married and whatever. <laughs> um, uh, sorry about the picture, by the way. That's supposed to be the, the fiery cloud. That's the nearest I can get to the fiery cloud that, that leads us. Anyway. Um, but I want to say this to you. God does not love an arm's length relationship. <laughs> you know, never leaving you or forsaking you is, is actually being with you in the moments of the day, in the mundane and the ordinary, <laughs> not just on a Sunday. He wants you to practice the presence of God in your life the whole time. So I, I just, uh, and one of the things that I found very helpful, and you know, this is up to you whether you want to take it on board or not, um, at, at my morning um, time of, of prayer, I offer God the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. And at night, I offer him the night. Why do I offer the night to God? Well, God sometimes speaks to me in the night, and he probably speaks to you too. <laughs> but the thing is that we just say, oh, I'm just tired, or... Oh, that was not a, not a relevant thought or whatever. You know, God wants to have that close relationship with you. He doesn't want an arm's length relationship. <laughs> this is not a distant uncle, a, uh, a, an aunt that you only see once every 15 years. This is a, a, a relationship of, of love. God does not want an arm's length relationship. And the next thing that he challenges... Um, Joshua about is about how we read the book of the law. Well, of course, in those days, it was just the five books of the law. Um, <laughs> um, and it's, um, uh, it's this, that, that God's word is not just a life belt, it's the boat that you ride in. Now, forgive me for, for using such um, <laughs> ordinary language here. Uh, but sometimes we use God as, oh my, you know, I'm in this real mess, Lord, please help me. Actually, <laughs> he's already with us. He's already there with us. Lord, please help me to have the right attitude at this time. Please uh, lead me. Um, God's word is always with us. Um, but taking God's word seriously is so important. And you'd, I, I was almost surprised when I read this um, uh, about Joshua because I think that Joshua was a man who probably did take God's word seriously. But it's easy for us to think that we do when we don't. <laughs> um, keep this book always on your lips. It, it, it's, it's difficult, isn't it, sometimes? Very interesting, really, when I was reading about the the Hebrew uh, thinking 
Um, in, in the West here, we, we value probably prayer more than reading God's Word. In Hebrews, value um, reading God's Word above prayer. Interesting, isn't it? That's their emphasis. The most important thing to them is reading God's Word. I'm not saying that we need to alter our, our perspective here. I'm just challenging us, really. Actually, how important is God's Word to you? You see, the reality of God's Word is this. That God word is the main way that he speaks to us. Actually, if you want to hear God's voice more and more, you need to study and read God's word more and more, because that's where God's heart is. There's um, a saying um, by the Hebrews which says 70 faces of Torah. Um, it's a bit of an obscure saying, but what that means is that there's 70 ways of reading each piece of scripture. Not a literal 70, but there's lots of different ways. And so when we read scripture, and we've all, I'm sure you've all done it, that suddenly a familiar bit of scripture suddenly takes on a new meaning. Um, why? Well, it's scripture. God inspired. God uses our hearts to speak to us. Um, that's it. Obey it. Do you know, it's far easier to know it, to listen to it, and not obey it, isn't it? And take um, it seriously. Don't manipulate it. In, in other words, it says in verse 7, don't um, turn from the right or the left. <laughs> so in other words, don't use it to manipulate it, to justify yourself. But use it to learn from it. Talk about it. Keep it on your lips. That's what it means. And meditate on it. Well, um, it's interesting, isn't it? Meditation. I don't know whether how many people meditate on God's word. Um, and it's one of those things that is not perhaps very trendy at the moment. Um, I have to say, um, meditation is something that I started at the be beginning of lockdown. Lockdown. Um, in March, uh, when was that? 2020? <laughs> We've got the year now, it's March been so long. 2020. 2020, yeah. Well, I have to say this, that that has been the greatest blessing of the last 20 months of meditating on God's Word. Um, uh, um, I cannot overemphasize that. Um, I'm not saying that any study of the Bible <laughs> is good. It is good, of course it is whether you read a commentary, whether you read Bible reading notes, or, or whatever. But there's one big difference with meditation. You have to rely on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> when you're reading somebody's commentary, you're relying on that person to reveal something. And God still speaks through that. Um, God speaks through all sorts of ways. But when you are meditating on a verse, um, you have to rely on the Holy Spirit. And there's been many, many, many times when I look at a verse, and I'm not necessarily just talking about a single verse, but generally that's what I tend to do. That's what I've, I've found has really been helpful. Um, and um, it, it's when you meditate on a particular verse that you think, yes, yes. Um, or, or there's a particular... Um, phrase, but perhaps even a particular word that might have significance for you, that God might be wanting to speak to you. So think about it, and, and um, I, I, I know I've, I've said this to the group hundreds of times, and they're probably bored with me saying it, but meditation is a little bit like a boiled sweet. You can read God's word, and when you read God's word, it's like swallowing a boiled sweet. When you meditate on God's word, it's like sucking a boiled sweet until the last drop, <laughs> um, perhaps I'm going into too much detail, but um, it, until you, you, you get the full benefit of the boiled sweet. Um, and so think about that. God speaks <laughs> through individual verses to you, even the obscure. I was just, I, I mean, I'm, I wasn't intending to say this, but I was just looking today at um, Matthew 4 verse 11 then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him now what is there to meditate on that 
But I can assure you there is. <coughs> I can assure you that God is speaking through that verse, which seems, well, obvious, you know. And it's only when you sit down and think, well, what is God really saying to me? What, what, what is he, what is he communicating? Of course, God, um, the devil left him after a period of temptation. And Jesus was taken into the wilderness for a particular purpose, not just temptation, but actually to really seek his father about how his ministry would evolve. And the <coughs> devil, after those temptations, left him. Which means that when I pray, sometimes I get thoughts that aren't of God. It's okay. <laughs> That's what, anyway, we won't go into that verse. But um, here is, so look for key, key words or phrases. What does it mean to you? What does perfect peace feel like to you? What is a steadfast mind? So think about meditation. You don't set yourself too high a bar. Maybe just start with just doing it once a week or perhaps for five minutes. Don't think meditation is about hours or whatever. Um, but for Joshua, meditation was important. He needed to put meditation into his life to get his balance of faith right. Um, the other curious thing is that, and it's a slightly uncomfortable thing really, and this is the verse that really struck me some years ago. Um, and that's uh, verse um, 8. Uh, Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. And the day and the night is significant. Um, I just wanted to emphasize the day and the night. <coughs> or I should say the morning and the night. You know, there is a reason <laughs> that our favorite verse from Lamentations, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and his mercy never comes to an end. It is new every morning. Do you know it's new every morning? Every morning. It is, why is it new every morning? Because every morning I recognise my own sin, <laughs> my own humanity, my own human nature. And so every morning is a good... And that, that verse is part of my prayers every morning. And I encourage you to do that because we need to be reminded that actually... <laughs> Our sins are great, but God's mercy is greater. Amen to that. Right, quickly. <laughs> so, um, so let's just summarise here. Um, uh, the promises that God gives us is, I will give you every place where you set your foot. You know, I'm going to be with you. That's really what he's saying. No one will be able to stand against you. Okay, Joshua had his difficulties. Joshua was deceived. Joshua had problems. But nobody stood against him. Why? Because God was with him and he is with us too. So the spiritual disciplines take the word of God seriously, obey it, don't manipulate it, talk about it and meditate upon it. So in other words, God is calling us to move forward in the spiritual disciplines as well as faith in him. So whatever God has called us to do, we need to do it. And you know this journey that Joshua had wasn't just about crossing the river Jordan and taking the land. The journey was about can I trust God going forward? That was the lesson. And if we don't learn the lesson from that, then we have missed the point. So, perhaps the title is wrong, rather than being ready, we should be strong and courageous. And I wanted to, Mark to read the whole chapter, because at the very end it says that the people said to Joshua, only be strong and courageous. 
And I'd like you to do something that perhaps you haven't done before. I'd like you to say to somebody, <laughs> Sheena, be strong and courageous. I'd like you to say that to somebody. Just now, just turn to whoever's next to you and tell them to be strong and courageous. <laughs> <laughs> Look, thank you so much. God bless you all. Let's just finish with a prayer. Lord, we thank you that um, you are for us and not against us. You are with us. We don't need to doubt it. We need to live it. <laughs> thank you that you are with us, around us, filling us, overflowing from us. Um, we don't need to doubt your presence. We need to live in it and take hold of the land that you've given us, whatever you've put on our hearts, Lord. May we have the strength of determination and the courage of restoration to actually do what you've called us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.